Welcome to the Douglas County Board of Commissioners Transportation Committee. This is a special call meeting as of Wednesday, September 11, 2019. Because this is a special call meeting at 2 p.m., we're going to go around the room for the official record and who's present. I'm Kelly Robinson, I'm Commissioner of District 2, and I'm chair of this committee. And I'll go to my right and we'll end with, of course, Madam Chair. Uh, County Administrator Mark Teal. Jessica Theriel, Assistant to Mark Teal. Phil Schaefer, Zoning Administrator. Ron Roberts, Planning and Zoning Manager. Go Valentin, Transportation Director. Gary Watson, Transit Services Division Director. Ramona Jackson Jones, the Chairman of Board Commissioners and the Vice Chairman of this com uh, committee, Transportation Committee. Welcome everybody. Well, we've got a pretty pretty tight agenda. Uh, mm -hmm. Doesn't look like it's full, but it's going to be uh, medium topics. So um, let's see. Director Valentin, you're first up. What do we got? Yes, sir. Uh, first item on the agenda today is a discussion about a, a possible amendment to the code that we need to uh, entertain in connection with new legislation that was passed during the last session uh, of the legislature related to small wireless facilities in the right-of-way. And uh, we've had a number of discussions and quite a bit of research that has been done by our uh, folks from planning and zoning, and we have Mr. Ron Roberts here, and Phil Schaefer, who have uh, done some pretty extensive uh, review of the ordinance, and uh, they would be able to lead us through any uh, specific details. Essentially, what, what the regulations now require is that we review permits related to wireless facilities to be located in the right-of-way in a different manner more expeditiously and following different criteria. A lot of the specific criteria is spelled out in the legislation itself, but we have to incorporate those requirements into the local ordinance in order for us to be not only in compliance with the legislation, but also to have the ability to charge the fees that are enabled by the legislation. Mm -hmm. And with that, I will uh, turn it over to uh, Ron and Phil to give us an overview of uh, the legislation itself. Sounds good. Okay. And so, the code that changed is actually 36-66C, uh, and these, these deals, uh, this deals, uh, as Director Valentin says, with the right-of-way 4G, 5G network. Mm -hmm. um, and these, this, car, this code goes into effect on October 1st. So it is a mechanism by which we can capture fees because it's not currently codified in our ordinance. Um, I had Phil go through the uh, section 14 of our code and uh, he's greatly responsible for putting this document together. Um, uh, background a little bit um, before we get into that specificity is I had actually talked to Atlanta Regional Commission. We had gone to um, a workshop about a year ago. We knew that this was coming. We knew this was going to be an issue and we, we needed to address it. Um, this particular draft that's in Civic Clerk and before you today and it'll be on the agenda for Monday is one that went through ACCG and GMA and actually came through the city of Norcross, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, um, and Forsyth County. So I contacted them and kind of worked through it. And, and then when we got the document, Phil had to go through it and, and make sure that it fit within our code because there are things in the ordinance that actually that refer to the zoning ordinance and things like that, but the ordinance itself is need to be updated, so he took the time to update those citations. Um, and then we also sent it over to legal and outside counsel that we work with um, and had them go through the document. And so what's before you is actually um, embedded, looked at by a lot of different people. Right, so let me, uh, to that point, is a framework. So 
because this is a special call meeting mm -hmm. outside of our normal, and, and while we may, um, and while I acknowledge we're working feverishly to sort of prepare for this new what was coming date, what is this that we're doing? I get wireless services, and again, this is for the official worker. Mm -hmm. um, we just need to uh, be a little patient and explain to the public what, what, what is this that we're doing? Uh, how did we, who pushed for this to sort of this be a mandate by the state? Mm -hmm. By this date, you shall do this. Mm -hmm. That we're here running um, outside of our normal meeting, that we have to accommodate this. But what, what, what's the driver for this? What is the value for the citizens that they're even listening to us talk about this? Well, the, the change actually occurred uh, legislatively last year and um, it's kind of driven by the internet providers themselves. I mean, we as, as the county and, and other municipal entities had power to dictate our own fees and, and, and set up our own costs and what our own timetable was for uh, placing things in the right of way. Mm -hmm. Well, the pendulum has swung. It's back the other side now. It's all, it gives, it gives, uh, it dictates what the fees, it's very specific in the code what we can charge. Um, and uh, the only thing that we really could address was mostly aesthetics and, 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 and things like that. And, um, and that's, that's really why we're, we're here, is because we have to do this. Um, did you want to add? Uh, yeah, I think the the bottom line is that the cellular industry went to the feds, and the feds adopted certain regulations that required a preemption of local authority over control of the wireless systems going into the, uh, the right of way. In order for us to gain a little bit of control back over what they are, what they have done at the federal level, and now at the state levels across the country is to adopt rules that require them at least to be reviewed so that we can see each one of the locations, make, making sure the locations are safe, making sure that other utilities are in fact protected. As we know on our code now, all our utilities have designated zones that they have to go into. They may not always be perfectly there, but they have to go into space. So when a third party comes along as a private company and says, we want access to that right away, that right away has been divvied up already in terms of where things can go. And so it becomes burdensome for the Department of Transportation with no rules at all, no fees to collect for reviewing any of these permits to say, well, we think you should go here. Well, okay, what if they don't want to go there? Mm -hmm. We have to have control to some degree over where they go. The legislation we've got here gives us the ability to tell the, the cellular providers this is where we believe safety-wise and expediently for your permit review-wise, you need to go here. And, and we'll, we don't adopt something, they can pretty much, they, they have free reign. They free can put wherever they want to, which would be They'll come in without probably review twice as many poles as they're actually, actually yeah. needed and in the wrong places and in conflicts with other utilities. And, and if I can flesh out to your question, Commissioner, the uh, essentially the technology that's going to be delivering particularly the 5G services mm -hmm. is different from the old technology. In the past, essentially, the wireless providers have to be outside of the driveway for the most part. And they could do that for a number of reasons. One, because most jurisdictions didn't allow for them to be in the driveway. And secondly, because they used much taller towers to broadcast their signals. This new technology requires that they be closer to get, uh, closer to the ground and this and the towers be closer together. So the only way that they will be able to implement that without having to go to private property owners along the road is to find a way to have rights given to granted to them to go in the right of way. And initially, there were companies that came in to the various counties and, and municipalities and said, we'd like to install towers in the right of way. Generally, they were told, no, our regulations do not allow it. And uh, then they tried going to GDOT, and GDOT had even more strict criteria on their part. So they went to the Board of Public Utilities and the legislature and at the federal level 
and essentially were able to get themselves the right to be within the right of way with certain conditions. And that is what the legislature allows for, for them to be in the right of way with certain constraints, provided that the local legislation provides the, the guidance necessary. Right. So Phil, what, what happens if the wireless provider doesn't want to go in the sliver of property that we suggest that they use? The, the right of way right now is, uh, it's, do, it's granted privileges to each of the different types of utilities. So our DOT would have the opportunity to say to that individual, no permit. You cannot go where you can disrupt someone else's. You can't do damage to someone else's uh, actual facilities. So you have to go where there's accessible space. And at least with this review process, you get that opportunity for DOT to say, the engineers go over the path and say, look, this is where everything is. Here's where you should go. And there's language in the, in the text to provide for that given it's a, it's a back and forth because there's going to be some places where it's hard and tight and DOT has to accommodate. They still have to accommodate, but we can make suggestions on where towers can go um, and they can take those suggestions or demonstrate why, uh, from an engineering perspective, they cannot meet those recommendations. And, yes, and again, so uh, again, uh, in 10 years of review, this um, proposed uh, code, I won't say amendment because we never had it, right? Well, maybe it's to, to amend whatever was in place or not in place and get it um, to the full board commission for a full recommendation. Kind of minister, is this supposed to be on the agenda this week coming up? Because of the timing? Okay, no That's problem. Correct. It is right. off the line. All right, no problem. So, but I'm going to, you, you were almost there, right? And so, while we appreciate the privilege that's being given in the lobbyists by the wireless carriers, here's the fundamental question. This is for the citizens. We, we, when we get to the Board of Commissions, I need this explained fully. Uh, for the citizens that is listening to this, which is, okay, what I hear is, we already got wireless providers that are here. They've got their tall towers and pretty trees. What's not being said in this room yet, I'm trying to get y'all to say it or confirm it or deny it, is that now we've got this new technology. I didn't hear the old wireless towers are going to go away. I'm hearing we're about to introduce new technology that is closer to the ground and multiple in number. So I'm looking at telephone poles and street lights and I'm like, so what are y'all about to say? How busy is this going to be? Right? That, that's the part I haven't heard explained. Uh, and it may, it may not be your position, but uh, and, and where will this start at? Like, okay, it's my understanding that it's not going to be countywide. It's going to be a, a targeted area. So while we don't have to belabor it now, be prepared Monday so that it, it's like, okay, y'all know what y'all saying, right? Like, we're about to drop more to the ground and as many as they want to based on what I hear. I mean, obviously we get to control where it goes, but to make the technology work, it's closer to the ground. Right, and so I guess this new technology, I, I don't know, it's supposed to be make it faster because it's close to the ground and gets to connect faster. I, I don't know how nerves work and, and mm -hmm. what this is based on. But let's be prepared to answer that question because I want to know, how is this going to look? Right, I know we had concerns earlier on. We used to put the wireless to 100 feet, 150 feet, and make it look like a tree, not look like a tree. That was the mm -hmm. old, and we'd have all the little prongs off, but okay, that's fine. Now, this 5G, whichever, whatever it's supposed to be, I'm not a technologist, I'm sure citizens listening, get this. But for those who are always concerned about architectural, just sort of landscaping, and, and what does that mean for um, just what that looks like? Are we about to go to a Jetson look? Like, okay, <laughs> now, I mean, really, you know, you, you got all this, and I'm, I'm not, I mean, it's lighthearted, but at the same point, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see this out, and it's like, okay, guys, this gonna be throughout the whole county? Are they using existing telephone poles or street lights? Or are you telling me they're gonna put brand new infrastructure in place, these brand new poles? And it's, it's, it's multiple. And so how far apart are they? And what is, this, what, what is this really gonna look like? The impact's even more extensive than you're saying right now because it isn't just 
the little towers, and it isn't just the little boxes on the telephone poles. Right. Every single one of those has to be connected right. power. physically to each other. Mm -hmm. You are oh, going to see only. you are going to see mm -hmm. them digging up our right of way physically to place fiber optic cables in the right of way mm -hmm. to connect every single tower and then trunk that over to one of the tall towers, which is the main receiver. Mm -hmm. So it's not just that it's going to be every telephone pole that they need or decorative poles they have to place. It's going to be a little bit of electricity has to go to each one and a lot of communication line has to go from pole to pole to connect the whole thing and give it the speed that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And to add also, I've had some discussions with Greystone um, with Georgia Power. They don't want these things on their poles. They don't have to put these on their poles. So they, they put the burden on us to say, so because now it's going to get real busy, it's real It's going to get real busy, a lot of holes. And some of these repeaters, to Phil's point, aren't just like the little tower. Some of them have boxes. And I guess it's like it can be either boxes on the existing poles, mm -hmm. or they put new poles in and have the boxes on That's correct. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you could, and one of the things that we've talked to a couple of the providers already, yep. but one of the legislation requires them to come in and, and sort of alert us that they're about to apply mm -hmm. in the near future. And two of them have come in to, to do that. Yep. And we tried to get them to commit to some level of uh, cohabitation. In other words, we don't want these canisters on every pole, can they stack them, you know, put different carriers on the same pole some kind of way, and the response so far has been, no, we can't do that because it will interfere with our communication. So we could have a corridor where you have one carrier come in and apply for a permit, and if they meet the criteria, you got to grant them that permit. Mm -hmm. Then the next one comes in, and if they are wanting to go where the other ones are, then we can say, well, obviously, you can't go on those poles. You can go on these over here. And that's what the permitting process will allow for us to kind of guide them in so that they do not interfere with each other. And hopefully, they won't be cutting up each other's lines when they start digging up the line. Mm -hmm. Basically, just giving us the, we ask the board of commissioners to sign this so we can have the, I guess, oversight governance for this project to make sure that everything is controlled in an aesthetically pleasing manner. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. to, to the extent that, that is possible. Yes. But we're codifying this. So we're, this becomes in our code, so all we need for this is a one time decision. We grant this, it's now codified, this is the rules, this is the process they must follow, mm -hmm. the committing process, and they're off to races. And so I, I get that, this is your standard job. And I'm sure my issue, it's not the really issue, but my raised eyebrow is just it, you look and feel. Like, what, what will this do to the character area that you're trying to shape, which is neat and manicured and everything's in order? Mm -hmm. You've got, you got all these, these poles. Mm -hmm. Uh, and again, all right, so for the sake of the moment, mm -hmm. but this is only one targeted area, right? So for us, was there not some type of mapping or is this all over the county? Talk to me. Tar targeted areas, they get to the side of the carriage mm -hmm. uh, where they're going to roll out the service. Okay. So, so far, we've had two of them and mm -hmm. they've been different areas. All right, so what are those areas? areas? I need to make this public. This doesn't need to be quiet. Well, well, let's see, they haven't applied yet. They've yeah, just right. essentially indicated that they intend to apply. When they file the application, all of this, in fact, in the legislation, mm -hmm. requires it to be open to the public. And this, but this applies to all unincorporated public. Yeah, the, the code itself would apply kind of yeah. to the right of way. Now, yes. if they went outside the right of way, that's something we're going to have to write up in the UDC, and that will go mm -hmm. through another process. The ordinance this can be changed by the Board of Commissioners. Yes. Mm -hmm. The UDC update would require, you know, us to have verbiage that deals with private location for this um, through our normal process, which is P&Z approval and then work. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. To your point, two people, two firms, at least I know of in one meeting where there was a firm that presented, but the 
to, to this board commission, maybe a subcommittee, a subgroup, or a full board. Uh, and it was presented that there was an area that was targeted. I just, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to hide that, 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 well, if you came in here, it's public records. There's no national security moment. What was the area that was mm -hmm. targeted so that the public understands what, again, you got to tell them. So I need you to say something. Somebody. I know what it is. I just want to see what staff's going to say. Right, yeah, I didn't meet with it. Okay. Miguel? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm aware of the one that came to, to talk to the Transportation Committee uh, at some point, as I recall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that they that they gave us a specific area that didn't. Um, Director Worthington and I and, and Phil mm -hmm. met with Verizon, yeah. mm -hmm. and they didn't say anything about a specific no. area. Commission. They wouldn't, that, in fact. They, they refused at the time to tell us exactly where they were going to go because of your question. They didn't want that question. Okay, so here's where I was. G5, they talked about the District 2 along that uh, Silver Creek area. That was the target area. Um, uh, so I guess that's Skyview. And I was wondering, okay, so why did they pick that area back up as a target? Again, don't make it public. Don't come in here if you don't want me to say nothing because we're not bound. But it was that Skyview area, uh, which was sort of that initial targeted area for this G5. I was like, yes, they like, okay, District mm -hmm. 2. So, again, maybe some of y'all weren't in that meeting, but I remember it, right? So I'm sure I got that presentation. I remember the targeting this. So, uh, again, it was a certain reason why there was some density there. Mm -hmm. uh, this is when they were talking about the legislation. I remember the guy came in here with her, like, y'all need to go, y'all need to go. He was pushing us. It's like, no, we're not going to do that until it's time. So, um, uh, to, to your question, because it, yeah. that one was not one of the carriers that... Not, not the current carrier. Not the current carrier. Right, that's fair. That was and, and, and to that point, we, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we couldn't get out of them at that time who they were representing. That's it. And, and so we're not certain how solid that application would be, but we've talked to yes. two legitimate carriers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, but, but, but to that point, in, in, in trying to lobby us to make decisions, you have to give us input. Right, oh, so why are we letting these people in the room? Right, so I'm listening to this guy, uh, and he, he's presenting why we need to move on this. And like, well, this is brand new to us. We know the legislation was just passed. We'll get up with this sometime close to October. But you can't come and, again, y'all allow people to come and pitch us on stuff. And, 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 and so I'm listening, and I'm like, okay, that's fine. Faster technology, all those things. So I'm not, but you're targeting the areas. Um, so you're messaging. So all I can do is go on the message that's being put out there, whether it's how accurate, plus or minus, degrees, but it's still, it, it can't be invalidated as not being said, right? So in other words, so as somebody comes and talks to me, and I go around talking to other people about G5, and say, okay, guys, what is this? I go around, and you know me, I'm going to go out to the marketplace and validate what I'm hearing in here. And, and so, again, um, and, and again, I, to your point, it hasn't become official. But we're setting expectations. Well, why did they pick that area? What I recall is that because it was the density, right? It was about density. In other words, is that where you have a high concentration of people, it makes sense for us to go to apply this technology versus somewhere where it's less dense. So, again, let's let's make sure that come Monday, we're we're in a better place to sort of like you know flesh this out. And right? Of course, the, the legislation originally was couched in the language of. This is for the rural areas to finally access right. the internet mm -hmm. and all of the data in the internet. Finally exactly. directed towards South Georgia. Right. And now we're seeing what the true intent was. Mm -hmm. Let's serve the customer base that we have already, highly dense customer base, get them the service that they want. And would that help subsidize it though? Yeah. At the end of the day when I asked the question, I said, okay, this is about money. No, you're not going to go out there where it's densely populated and stuff to provide them something where you've got a brand new technology platform. You need to go in there where you've got all those people already there and you can recoup some of them costs so that you can go further out, but, but duly noted. Yeah. But let's make sure we're ready for this. I won't believe in the moment. I made my point, Madam Chair, about just being prepared when we come before the full board. Um, so, um, Director Valentin or, or, or Mr. Roberts, y'all want to go into more further detail into the code here? Because I, I, I got the framework that I wanted for the record. but. How do you want to handle the detail in this committee to get to recommendations? Yeah, I could I can get into some of the specific yeah. requirements. Uh, one of the handouts, uh, essentially in, in summary, what it does is uh, 
it, this new legislation provides for co-location or new uh, installation of mm -hmm. poles. Mm -hmm. uh, it limits the height to 50 feet or 10 feet above the tallest pole existing as of January 1st, 2019. Uh, provides for the permit requirements at the local level. Establishes specific review periods. Uh, within 20 days of receipt of an application, the county must determine if it is complete and provide a direction or uh, guidance to the applicant uh, if there is something that needs to be uh, added. Otherwise, the application is deemed automatically complete. Okay. So it, it gives us a, a rather tight time window to do the review. Do you have staff to be able to turn this around? Do you know what the impact? Have you been able to at least quantify in the first pass what this means? That now, could they able to come in pretty hot, multiple carriers? Do you have staff? We, we have staff. Do you have access I think initially we think we can handle it, but depending on how many applications we get in, uh, we may have to uh, see what else we need. But at the moment, we think we can handle it with our existing staff. Right, so this will be done by DOT and not Correct. planning and zoning, though they will be facilitating the application process, right? Planning and zoning just, just want to We saw that going to the meetings that there was a need and this was coming down the pike, so we wanted to help yep. push this along. Uh, additionally, I had some conversations with GIS about getting um, uh, Greystone uh, power poles and things like that, so that could be an additional resource. We can have that in GIS to provide to. Todd and DOT uh, for, for his review of these things. Yeah, it's technically it falls under Miguel's utility permit. That's what I was trying to get to. Yeah. Where does it come in? Utility yeah. permit. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right, keep going. Yeah. All right, so um, there's only certain uh, conditions that would warrant denial of the permit. Yep. Uh, very narrow scope here. Uh, provides for the levying of uh, fines up to $500 for not getting a permit or not following the requirements of the permit. Mm -hmm. uh, stipulates that the applicant shall pay fees in accordance with the legislation, and that is in the magnitude of $100 per pole. Uh, if they're locating on an existing pole, $250 per pole. If they're replacing an existing pole, and up to 1000 per pole, for a new pole installation. Yep. So those are the application fees. Then there is an annual recurring fee for the installation of $100 per pole yep. on existing pole, $100 per pole on a replacement pole, and up to $250 per pole on a new pole. And uh, in addition, there is a recurring annual attachment charge of up to $40 per pole on Poles that are owned by the county or controlled by the county. So one of the targets that we anticipate are traffic signals. Those are county-owned poles at uh, many of the locations. So they would have to essentially pay the county for forty dollars per pole to be attached to them. Right. So I got a, a, a like a street light signal mm -hmm. pole. And yes. The wire goes across. And we're talking about it's going to be attached to these poles on the edges. Correct. It could be a, it could be a single installation per intersect. Mm -hmm. It can broadcast in all directions. All right. So just one. I mean, okay. I'm, I'm just so I'm trying to get my mind on. But have, has, have y'all seen anything for the legislative process or rendering of what potentially this looks like? Right. I'm just the the, one, the ones that we've seen and, and the, the company that came in and presented. Yeah. Uh, they essentially initially probably look like canister. Mm -hmm. Like canister. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Tall yeah. canister. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe tall canister. No more 18 to 24 inch tall canister. And so they, they may be a foot in diameter and they would sit on top of the pole or some, somehow or attached to the pole. Tempo. Yeah. So yeah. you wouldn't you wouldn't have any idea of having a new post to talk to the application. Until the application oh. comes in. Mm -hmm. We don't know how what the distance between each one, like is there a standard you know, I don't know anything about um, electricity and so forth. No, telephone poles. Yeah, there, there, poles there, is, there is some, some criteria in, in terms of they shouldn't be any, well, they're, they're going to try, because of their own interest, to minimize the spacing because they want to be able to broadcast the signal and have the next one overlap perhaps a little bit for coverage, yep. but not to double up necessarily. So 
Uh, one indication we've had is perhaps around 700 feet between poles might provide the coverage that they need. But we really don't know that until we get the details within the application. Because, for example, if they come in and they say, we want to use uh, one of the traffic signal poles, and for some reason there is you know, reason for us to say, no, we'd rather you not do that, but you can go on that pole over there. And they can, they can produce some uh, coverage map of the radio signal that, mm -hmm. that indicates, well, over here, on the one that we wanted to attach to on your signal, we, it provides the coverage that we need, but 100 feet away, it does not. And so we would have to be in a decision to review that and, and essentially work it out. With it. Great, so it's not really 700 feet, so I'm telling you to feel for it. If I look at the corner of uh, right here, the hospital drive uh, and the, the cross street, what's 700 feet? To Wellstar, to the end of our park? What What's 700 feet for the sake of? Starting from from our uh, from Doris Road intersection, for example, yep. mm -hmm. uh, relative. Seven hundred feet might be to the first driveway. Of those yeah, it would be mm -hmm. right over here. It wouldn't yeah. be far. It would okay. It would be down. Yeah. down, down to well, not their main driveway, but the one that's closest, sort of behind it. There. Okay. All right. Uh, Coal quality, wood versus uh, metal. So what are we looking? At? They're gonna essentially. They're gonna want to attach an existing poles but to minimize the cost. And if, if the pole uh, is not uh, tall enough or whatever, they need to replace it with a taller wooden pole, then they have that option. Or if it's in an area where there are decorative poles, mm -hmm. then they can't come in with wooden poles. They have to duplicate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like yeah. You said 50 feet feet tall or 10 feet above the tallest. Did I hear that right? Correct. Sure. Mm -hmm. A curved pole, or unless it's 100 feet, 150, you know, I'll hear about dearly. Yeah. So, to, oh, power pole is probably 30, maybe 40 at the most. Right. Yeah, feet yeah. And, and because of the technology, they can't go too high. They mm -hmm. want to be They want to be low, right. Yeah. You have to understand 5G is supposed to be like in the future if they have autonomous vehicles, that would be the technology that they would utilize. Okay. Right, so there's, remember that, you know, yeah. uh, that, that, that this is not just about the internet, but also it, it, it enables, um, it's an adaptive technology that it enables other applications such as um, that, which is, that, that was the point that I wanted to drop on that point. But to that, to that point, um, we got fees, do we? we do we make money? We mm -hmm. can't. Under the legislation, we have to break even. Okay, so, so yeah. pretty much everything down is designed to break even. So it breaks even, but if you need to get another staff member mm -hmm. to cover this, then potentially yes. Okay. I'm just talking about mm -hmm. right. So it, it, if you need it, but then there's still, it break even meaning it just allows you to facilitate the permit process. That's it. Mm -hmm. okay. Whatever that means. Mm -hmm. Um, Just one question at the end on these wooden poles. Are, are they obsolete now? You know, the old fashioned wooden poles on this thing? Not at all. They're no. still in No, the they're still in the They still put up new ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm trying to get them to get some yeah. nice metal ones off of the counter. Okay. Ah. Unfortunately. They still but are to, obsolete. But to that point, okay, so one more time, we got the old network that doesn't reach rural, that barely reach all of us. Right? I mean, it's not 100%. You know, there is a digital divide that exists. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to put this new 5G technology. Is to go? Or is this a supplement to the? Wh where we're we going with this? Will one go away, like the analog versus the digital, and eventually we we, we migrate it out? And again, I'm not a technologist, so mm -hmm. I, I can stand to be corrected. But is it is that where we're going? This 5G will ultimately replace the traditional, like uh, digital, replace analog, or is this more of a supplemental? I you know where they're gonna coexist. It's meant to be a replacement. Okay. Right. So 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 looking ahead, we're talking five G now. What's gonna happen with six G, seven G or whatever well, comes next? Yeah. Technically with I mean we don't really have like enough four G coverage really mm -hmm. to, to, so this is this is years and years of of technology that we're looking at with five G. So as far as I don't know what would happen with 6G by that point. Some of the things that Phil and, and, and I looked at when it was um, he looked at uh, different at this technology as it relates to Europe, like in Europe, um, 
Because they were using, they were able to use sewers and manhole covers and, and mount the devices there. It's a lot less obtrusive. But when we mentioned that to the providers, they had no interest in hearing any of that from us. Yeah, and one of the things that, that we did indicate was that initially this is intended to be 4G compatible, mm -hmm. meaning that they will install it if they apply October 1st and they get a permit and the, the installation happens this fall, mm -hmm. that the signal that will be broadcast is going to be 4G. Mm -hmm. Now, the same equipment, when they roll out the 5G, they can utilize the same equipment so it is compatible. Right. So to your question, there is a possibility that when 6G rolls out in the year 2050 or whatever it is, right. that the equipment itself doesn't have to change. That there's something they do with uh, manipulating the signals to be able to make the old signals. And I appreciate the uh, new technologies and, and, and how um, you know, the difference between Windows or Excel 3, Windows 3.0 versus XP versus all the, 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 the various iterations. One, they become generational, right? They, they, they leap forward where the other one, the other prior ones becomes obsolete. So I appreciate technology. I know it moves fast. I'm just curious as why our state legislators, I guess, have were any of us involved? Because by the time we found out about this, and now it might have been involved, the ACCG and GMA. Yes, it was. ACCG yeah. and GM, GMA. Yeah, they were involved. It just seems like, but were we, they were acting more as lobbyists on behalf of the, the, the power brokers than, because I'm like, why'd y'all let them, like, really? They came to the feds first. Uh, are you so, right, uh, that makes it even grandpa. <laughs> I mean, Grandma came was, down was, to the local. Was, I think it was September of. Um, I want to say, Commissioner, it was, it was September of 2017, or at that that uh, the, the Federal Communications Administration. No, I, I don't. I don't have a problem made, with it. You know, heard this in Washington, and then it, it has now trickled down to affect the codification that you see here in, in our state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the impact at the local level. Right. I get you removed in Washington. I get, I mean, going there next week, I get it. But, but I'm just like, oh, God, did y'all just see what just happened? I know how mandates happen. We're, 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 it's just like, mm -hmm. I mean, we're, 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 it just, this is going to get busy. And it, it, it's, it's not an issue today, not an issue perhaps in the next two, three, four budgeting cycles. But when this thing cranks up, it's going to fundamentally change the way a county can look. And that's what's not being said. Like, guys, this is going to get real busy. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a whole bunch of pole, poles, 50 foot poles going down the street on top of the existing infrastructure that you just can't pull down. And yes, you will leverage where you can existing infrastructure, but for the most part, they said, we're going to do it to your point. They went straight to the Fed. We want what we want. We're going to make everybody down below go along with this. So once they did it at the federal level, it is what it is. The typical wireless cellular. Uh, we know it's sort of like you know, um, the sovereignness that's associated with the railroads and stuff. We get it. We, we, we understand their power. But did anybody sit there and advocate, like, where was our congressmen and senators? Where was our state legislature? Did y'all not know that this is going to impact up at local level and how this is going to look? Did you get that? We're so enamored by the technology and how much, look at, look at us, look at us, look at us. Like, do y'all get the impact on our quality of life? How? It, 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 and again, it may be less of an issue in the more urbanized areas, and maybe in the more more rural areas, you're so spread out. Maybe it won't affect. Maybe you won't care because you, you know, ten acres and you know a mile from your neighbor. But I, I just think maybe in a suburban area, guys, this is going to get busy, and it's going to fundamentally change when they roll this thing all the way out because you have to be so connected. It's going to fundamentally shape, reshape the way we see our, our landscape. And it just tell the citizens now, let them know, like, okay, we, we ain't going to even try to make, make this some kind of way, frame this in a way that, like, no, guys, that's what this is going to be. And that's why I was trying to get a feel for how, how far our part was his spread. It's not the end of the world, but you just got to begin to tell them, because then they're going to try to look at us, why did y'all let this? So you get ahead of them. Right, we're enacting the code. It's going to like these guys are going to come in here. And they ain't about they're about making money. And they got deep pockets. And they're going to run this thing. And I'm sitting here like, okay, guys, let's be prepared. That's why I'm saying, Madam Chair, I'm 
it, it may be a flex organization once they get it up and going, then that, you know, I just hope you don't get behind on this. Uh, what happens if we're not compliant in our, is there a penalty to us? If we don't turn around, what did you tell me, 20 the, days? The, okay. the penalty is they get the permit automatically. Oh, if they don't. They can do what they do. And we can't charge any fees. Right. Uh, I guess my biggest concern is it's a, it's a federal mandate. And why are, at the local level, are we required to provide staffing to take care of some things that are, you know, related oh. to federal mandates? So I'm like, why are we? Unfunded. Yeah. And then also, uh, just to piggyback off what uh, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson just stated to me, uh, he just made it very clear it's, uh, from the aesthetically uh, unpleasing uh, point. Classic example, you know, we have paper boxes located all through the county. They all bent up, mm -hmm. people backed into them. So now they've advanced technology and we've moved to satellites. And so I've had some some citizens say, why don't you all get these old ugly cable boxes up? You know what I'm talking about, the ones that are in the grounds in front of the house, because you're not, you're not utilizing those anymore. So I think the point well taken, we need to clean up. If we, if we change technology, we need to get the old mess up before we enter me down. Have you all noticed? I've, they sit right in outside of your house. Those little green. Mm -hmm. You, <laughs> you already know. They still use those, Madam Chair. I, I remember you asked me about that when mm -hmm. we were on that trip to South Carolina, and I came back first thing, and I asked Todd about that, and, and started checking around, and they actually, to Mark's point, they still, they still use, use cable them. boxes. Cable boxes and the uh, transformers for power company. Well, you know, my neighbor just kept saying, "Why don't you get these boxes up there? Not being used, but they are." So I will, I will respond to them by saying they are not being used. Okay. And as far as the state legislature went. So. No, I just wonder if, if there are any other things out there that we're not using, such that, that expired many years ago that sit out there. I'm assuming everything has been taken up by cable companies and other things like that. You know, other mm -hmm. businesses or what have you. Okay, so those yeah, boxes as work. Well. Okay. So, as far as the state ahead. legislature, no, they did know that was one of our on our legislative priority list that Tiffany brought yes, up yeah. Yeah, last year, November, December. Mm -hmm. So essentially it said it's for the enhanced wireless service for small cell deployment and local government uh, right away. So it says Douglas County supports expanding an enhanced wireless service and broadband access throughout Georgia. It says Douglas County recognizes that installation of small cell poles and broadband equipment in the public right away may play a critical role in enhancing wireless service and broadband connectivity. However, we must maintain our ability to balance this access of the right of way with the role of ensuring public safety and public health. And that Douglas County opposes state legislation which preempts or otherwise diminishes its ability to responsibly regulate right of way. And I think that mirrors what ACCG took to the legislature as well. So you know, we get out right away. I, I get it. It's on point. It, it, but but what, what, what was you said, we supported it as small tower, yes. But it, it, we didn't get the example until the legislation was passed. Like, but what does that mean? What is the density? So that's the part why you know, I guess they had to work through the legislation to get to a point where it was approved. But once it was approved, and I were on the other side, they said, like, Oh, this is going to be really close together. Mm -hmm. like, we're thinking you're just going to take down poles, replace poles, and use your existing or put one on this, and it'd be okay, maybe next to. But you, you get what I'm saying? So, no, we, not that there was not awareness. This is that now we see what the real, oh, this is what they really meant. Mm -hmm. Like, just like you know, we thought it was going to rule, but you know, we're going to make this money over here in this, this, this repopulated area. So, we know how legislation works. So, it's not a criticism per se. And again, nothing was about our group. We're like, this yeah. is what just came down. And it's, it's sort of a, you shall do. We mm -hmm. shall. And that's why we're here for October first. So, okay, Miguel. We know this is a special call. It's for this topic uh, and maybe one other. So, is there anything highlight that we need to go over prior to making a formal recommendation to the board of commissioners to really work through this? No, I think we've, we've uh, discussed this one as much as we need to at this point. Administrator, I want you to be comfortable. Yep, okay I'm comfortable. Yes, sir. You guys okay? Be, pre be prepared. Um, would they be here Monday to defend this public oh, yeah. and talk yes, about it? Right. I think Miguel's going to present it, right? Do you, you have any uh, photographs, uh, Ron, of any other counties that have already started the process so the board yeah, yeah, this, can this, take a look? So you have mm -hmm. something we could place on the Monday? 
Mother Pam Farm Workstation. There's examples on the internet of what some of these things look like. Yeah, so oh, poles, yes. poles. Yeah, so so yeah, be, we can pull that up. Yeah, so we'll make sure we have it. Okay. All right. Yep. Yes, sir. Okay. So the next item on uh, the any recommendation? Yeah, yeah, that, that was my, yeah. my well, but uh, we yeah we need a recommendation to to take it to the board, but right. not in terms of which way to go because we got a public hearing. Yes. That's correct. There's a public hearing. I just want to make sure that we did we did review it. We did talk about it. We just want to send it yes, to the full board for the next step. Can I get a recommendation? Can I get a motion to make a recommendation to send this to the full board? I'll make a motion that we send this to the full board for public hearing. I second that motion. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any declining vote say decline. Motion carried unanimously. Okay, we go. Good job. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, second item on the agenda. Thank you. For sure. Thank you. See you Monday. Do I want to stay? Over. I think we have other things we need to take care of. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the second item on the agenda is related to the Maxim Road project. Yep. We've talked about this a couple times at, at this committee. Uh, essentially, the, it was a project that was designed by the county or, or by the consultant on behalf of the county. And uh, we advertised, went through the GDOT process, advertised for construction, received the bids. Initially, our budget, and there, one of the handouts has a, a summary uh, of the funding levels on that. I do have yep. additional copies yep. of You're right out there. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So essentially, uh, we had estimated going before the bid or, um, that it would be about 2.4 million. Yep. And uh, we were getting 1.8 million in federal funds, and the county was going to be um, required to come up with 611,000 from the capital transportation fund. So that's yep. how we went into it. Uh, when the bids came in, it actually the bid came in at this. The low bid came in at 2.8 million, and um, so at that time, uh, I, as required by the by the federal process, conveyed the information to GDOT uh, with a copy of the bids for their concurrence, indicating that we had reviewed the low bidder and all the bids, but that we were comfortable with the low bidder, uh, could find no errors in their bid and for them to concur. They reviewed it and along with that uh, referral to GDOT, I asked, sent them a request for additional uh, federal funding. Yep. At, at the time they came back after several weeks, probably two or three weeks, and indicated that unfortunately there was no additional funding that they could provide. And uh, so I came back before the committee and, and indicated that unfortunately we're going to have to come up with all of the funds that are still missing from uh, to get us up to the 2.8 if we want to move the project forward. At the same time, uh, I appealed to GDOT uh, to reconsider, uh, not necessarily uh, the same individuals, but uh, others that uh, have uh, the ability to uh, to take a second look at it, and, and they engaged in uh, seeing if there was a way that they could uh, find additional funding. And more recently, they have come back and indicated that, that, that they are going to be able to facilitate the additional funds that we requested. So um, we had allocated six, or we anticipated we would need 611000 569 from the capital transportation fund, uh, but based on uh, the additional funding that's being provided by GDOT, uh, we are only going to need, uh, hopefully if everything goes well, 580,000. And so instead of needing close to another half a million, we will not need that, and we could potentially uh, Deliver the project with less than what's already been targeted for this. 
sorry, this was a $30,000 net difference to the county as we released our contribution. About the 611 versus 580, I think that right? Yeah, that, that is net below where we thought we were going to be. Good. Did good. Did good. Right. And that 611 was already approved in the city. It was already yeah. approved. Right. It's already there, I know. Right, right. So, mm -hmm. um, so this is good. Man. But, right. So, again, always good to have a savings, but still, um, when will we know officially? Is there an action that needs to be taken now? There is. Um, what they have done is they have sent us a funding agreement that we need to get on the agenda for approval by the board. Yeah. Once uh, that is approved and it's gotten back to GDOT and they go through their process and sign off, then they will send us a notice to proceed to award the construction contract. We anticipate that process takes about two weeks after the board approves. So if uh, what I would, what I'm looking for today is, is a recommendation to, to get this to the board at the next meeting, uh, this upcoming meeting for approval of the GDOT funding contract with the additional funds. Mm -hmm. And that would allow for us to act on it, get it back to them, and uh, hopefully within a few weeks after that we will get a notice to proceed. And I will be back before the board <clears throat> with a contract to award to the low bid. No bid for construction. For construction. Mm -hmm. We're good. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's good. Okay. All right. So I need to get a motion to make a recommendation to um, move forward on the funding agreement first before the board of commissioners. And I'm assuming uh, that we can make it necessary for this coming Monday's meeting. I'm sure you have a problem putting this on Monday's agenda, or y'all full? No, we're not full. Mm -hmm. Sorry. No, 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 any further discussion on this? Again, this coming Monday's meeting, work session, this item will be added. Um, and and um, for the, to sign off on the funding agreement, get Madam Chair to sign the funding agreement that goes up. Correct. Okay, to GDOT. All right. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, that's the first part. Okay. That's all you needed for that part? That's all I need for that. Keep Thank you. Here. Okay, the next item on the, on the agenda is this Sweetwater Church and Doris Road intersection improvement project. Yep. It's another one that we bid, uh, and this one does not carry federal funding, so um, GDOT does not enter into the picture. However, we do have a standing agreement with Polden County that they would cover. 50% of the cost of, of the project. Okay. Mm -hmm. we, we advertised and uh, got six bids. The low bidder uh, came in at $663,872.80. Uh, we've looked at the credentials of the low bidder and they are GDOT certified and as far as we can tell, they are a viable uh, contractor. Yeah. So we would be making a, a recommendation uh, to, to move forward with this award. Uh, this is an item, again, that we can put on the agenda uh, if, if, if we can get a recommendation. Out of it. Yeah. Based on the SPLOS budget. This is SPLOS. This one is SPLOS. Based on the SPLOS budget, it is under budget. It is under budget, correct. Okay. They have come in under what we had. Anticipate. 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 What we projected the estimate. We estimate. Yeah. In fact, it was 600000 Yes. Okay. And our portion, correct me if I'm wrong, would only be half this, which is 330. Okay. Six. 332. Okay. So, so it is substantially under. Because of Paul's match. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so we would, we would have the that funding available in this for us. Okay. All right, so this coming, uh, this also an item that's uh, being sought to put on this coming Monday's agenda. Yes, sir. Do you have room for it? Yes, sir. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. All right, so can I get a motion, Miguel, to send this to the full board commissioners? Yes, I make a motion that 
we um, recommend to the board uh, that we approve the recommendation to the board for award of the construction contract on the Doris Road, Sweetwater Church, Baker's Bridge, High Point Road intersection project uh, to summit construction in the amount of six hundred sixty-three thousand eight hundred seventy-two dollars and eighty cents. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Motion discussed. Second. Um, this um, this contract uh, again is still it's coming out of the swaps, right? Yes, sir. Fully. No match. No nothing from us yes, other than our partner up in Gordon County. Right. All right. So we got a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I had for this meeting. Okay. It is a special call and I, I plan not to add anything to this at this moment. I'm just kind of sure you got anything no, sir, I'm good. that we so our next meeting will be at um, this coming Tuesday. That is correct. I've normally scheduled two PM meetings. Yes, sir. All right, then we will let this meeting stand adjourned.